be good in about 30 seconds. It's just setting the stream up on Facebook. Um, okay. Okay, so I think we are live now, which is brilliant. So hello everybody, welcome to today's PB webinar. Um, my name is Amanda Pauly and I'm the Deputy Editor. Um, and today we're going to be talking about how to deal with client no-shows during coronavirus and just in general. Um, today I'm joined by the wonderful Maria Mason. Um, she's the owner of Beauty Time Salon in Cleve and she's going to be discussing this issue and how best to manage it. Um, whether you're, you know, a bricks and mortar salon, a home-based therapist, and she'll also be talking about how you need to adjust your policies, especially given everything that's going on at the moment. Um, there will be time for questions at the end, so if you do have a question for Maria, just pop it in the comment box and I will pose it to her at the end. Um, but Maria, I don't know if you want to quickly just tell everybody a little bit about yourself before we kind of get stuck in. Yeah, of course. Hello, everybody, and I hope you're all staying safe and well. Um, so I've been in the beauty industry for about 27 years, and I run my own very successful salon with an amazing team. I'm also the vice president of the FHT, and I've been a professional judge for beauty uh, for professional beauty for about 12 years okay, I'm okay. Super passionate about everything and you know there's not a thing I wouldn't do to help other salon owners so hopefully some of this today will be helpful to all of you <laughs> brilliant so Maria I'm going to turn off my camera and my mic and um, just so I can monitor the comments and I'll let you get going and you just let me know when you're at the end of the slideshow okay. and I'll turn them back on um, but best of luck and I'm really looking forward to listening to it Okay. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, see you in a minute, Amanda. So hello everybody. Um, I wanted to talk today to you about client no-shows and how to manage that just generally and how to manage that during COVID as well because it's got to be one of the worst things that we want to hear is it that phone ringing and a client saying there and then that they're not turning up for their appointment or if they're just not turning up at all which is really really difficult and in this time that we are finding ourselves in when diary time is you know, less than we would normally have. It's really important that we understand how to communicate our policies about cancellation to our clients. So I've put together this little presentation. So um, I hope it makes sense to you. It's definitely how we deal with things at Beauty Time. So let's, let's go through it together. So the background really to dealing with any no-shows uh, and late cancellations is you really must have respect for yourself as a therapist, respect for your profession. You are a qualified person, you're a qualified therapist, and you're offering professional qualified treatments. Clients have chosen to book with you by reputation or recommendation. They know you're professional. And your clients from onset really should be aware of your policies. So you really need to make that very clear from the beginning of the professional relationship. So professional boundaries are always helpful. So I have tread the whole board in the industry. I have been a mobile therapist at the very beginning of my career. I've worked with just one or two um, therapists, but now I have my own very large team in our own premises. So I've tread the whole board, but I've one thing that I've always been very true to is being very professional. Even though clients want you to be their friends, um, if the meeting with the client initially is through your business, you have to remember this is a very professional relationship. So clients must understand, just like doctors and dentists and other professionals, we do follow a code of professional ethics. And it's really, really important because it's going to make situations where you have to address policies much easier for you if you have done this from onset. So make the client aware of your cancellation policy when they're booking. So if it's the first time a client's coming to you, this is your opportunity to explain that to them. If it has been coming for a long time and they've forgotten the policy, COVID now with limited diary space is another great opportunity to bring that up. So we really must be very clear about this. Now, your clients are actually going to benefit from this policy and what you can do at this time, again, be very professional and explain why they're going to benefit. So you have to say to your clients that um, diary time is limited and, and as a busy salon, you can offer more availability to 
every client if cancellations are made within 24 hours. It enables you to offer that to somebody who's probably on your waiting list. And most of my friends that are salon owners, you know, we I know most of us have people on waiting lists at this time. And also point out to that client that, you know, it, it could be them on the waiting list. So if everybody respects the opportunity to give 24 hours notice, it will be much nicer for everybody to find that space. We all hate this. Ring, ring, the telephone rings. Uh, this actually is a phone I have in my salon. And somebody picks up the phone, even if they have the decency to pick up the phone and say, I need to cancel my appointment today. So you have to be very careful here. I mean, if people are genuinely sick, we'll go into the COVID sick thing in a minute. If people are genuinely sick or there has been an emergency and they have had the decency to call you, then you must use your discretion at this point. But of course, there's going to be times when clients don't turn up and they don't ring you. And I think what's really, really important is that you have to follow that through. It's always very difficult. And sometimes, you know, it is the same client doing it, but you must, must, must call the client back. And, you know, hello, this is beauty time. Uh, did you forget your appointment today? Is everything okay? So always follow up your no-shows. It's important for the continued professional relationship you have with your clients. Of course, it could be a valid reason. And, you know, if it is a valid reason, then as a caring professional, you're showing you know, that it matters to you that the client is okay. If it's not a genuine reason, then this is your opportunity to go back over your policy. And you must always, always make your clients feel really, really welcome. And even if you're really cross, and it is hard, especially if it's like a two hour appointment, you really must keep your professional attitude. And because your client needs to, will feel uncomfortable if she's generally forgotten and there will be lots of apologies, but you must still make it comfortable for her to visit. But of course, at this point, if she just has forgotten, you really do have to charge that cancellation fee. And at Beauty Time, what we do is we do, if the client has generally forgotten and there is no valid reason, we would charge that full amount. Your policies should be visible everywhere. They should be in your reception area. They should be in your treatment rooms. They should be on your website and any other material that explains how to book. There should be something in there explaining how to cancel if that's needed. But uh, I always like to give a little wee, uh, leeway. Um, I think it's really important because we do have, you know, very close relationships with our clients and, um, you know, they often see us as their friend, but of course their boundary must be in there to be professional. So I always like to give a little bit of leeway. So if it's the very first time a client has done it with no genuine reason, I always follow it through and I say to them, I'll use this opportunity to just remind you of our policy, but our computer will record this and um, next time we will, we will need to charge you because at short notice, we can't offer that diary space to anybody else. And what you need to do at that point is, again, you know, keep it nice and friendly and professional, but explain that you do have clients where they have genuinely forgotten, but they do understand your policies and they always pay. I always pay if I forget the dentist or chiropractors or physio because I'm a professional. I understand that we are selling time. So it's also really important that you explain to your clients, however, it might be your favorite client. But if you cherry pick the clients that you like and the ones that you want to charge and you don't want to charge, it will get out. And, it, and it's just not fair, really. You can't not charge a client because you like them more than the other client. You have to adopt a fair policy at all times. You'd be amazed who knows who in your business and who talks to who. And if it got out that you didn't charge somebody, but you charge somebody else, that's going to be worse than... than not charging it it will make you feel very unfair and in in the eyes of your clients it's just not the right thing to do 
So make sure you give them that bit of leeway. You know, I'm, I'm so sorry. And I always say to them, I say, I hate doing this. Um, it's just, I, I really, please, please give me that 24 hours notice. You know, please have a policy for writing down your appointments. We give a reminder call to clients, but we say to them, they must have their own uh, diary in place so that they know when they're coming. Uh, it's not nice, explain you don't like doing it, but you have to respect your running a business. And you must keep a record. You must always keep a record of people that uh, are late cance cancellations or no shows. And if you have made a charge as a result, we have the Premier Spa booking system and it will actually record all of that for us. Some of you may be, if you're mobile therapists, you may be on an appointment diary or you may be having record cards. Um, some of you are with Forest whatever it is, however you deal with this, you have to record that you've actually done that. So COVID cancellations. So let's talk about what happens in this circumstances. So we all know the COVID symptoms, okay? We're all following procedures at the moment and we're taking temperature of clients coming into our salon and we're doing track and trace and we're wearing all the PPE. So what we have been told is the high temperature, and that's why we take temperatures when clients come to our business or we visit clients, is probably the most definite of all the signs. Um, then persistent cough, loss of smell, loss of taste. So those are the very definite COVID symptoms. So as we enter the flu system and to some clients, similar uh, COVID symptoms will be similar to flu. We need to make it very clear that we have to protect our business. What we don't want as salon owners or therapists is we don't really want clients using COVID as a reason to cancel last minute and sort of just saying, oh, um, we've already experienced this. So this is why we've put our policies in place. Oh, I'm really sorry. I'm not feeling well. I, I'm, I'm just not sure. We can't have, I'm just not sure. If a client uses COVID as a reason to not come in, then we absolutely 100% must see the copy of the negative test results. Now, um, most places have testing sites available. Um, I'm in the Bristol area, we've got Bristol Airport. So if a client calls you at ship notice and says, I'm not feeling well, and, and says, I think it could be COVID, you must protect everybody in your business and all the clients that are coming through. And what you need to do is to say to them, of course, we won't charge you um, under these circumstances, but we will need to see your negative test results before we book you back in. It's too risky for you to be casual at this stage and say to clients, no, that's okay. Oh yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, I think under the circumstances, symptoms of high temperature can come on um, quite quickly. So it's understandable if a client is experiencing that and is concerned, but they must, must, must get a test. So we have a two tier uh, cancellation policy at Beauty Time, and we've put this everywhere. Um, it's going to go up on our Facebook as well. It's in all our treatment rooms. It's in our bathroom. It's going up on our website. So um, and when clients come in, we, we, we've laminated this and we say, could we just ask you to read this? So we are very aware with, that everybody is knowing what we're doing here. So please, can we politely ask you to take a minute to read through our two tier cancellation policy? So here at Beauty Time, we take your safety very seriously and our businesses run, our business at Beauty Time now is run as a private practice and we do know everybody uh, that's coming through. We can talk about that some other time. But so our two-tier policy is generally unwell. If you feel generally unwell and you're not displaying any COVID symptoms, we ask that you continue to respect our 24-hour cancellation policy and, um, and we can offer that space to somebody else. And especially important pointing out to the clients whilst diary time is limited because of all our sanitation time. So the second tier to our policy is possible, possible COVID symptoms. So however, if you think you're displaying COVID symptoms, we will of course not charge you if you're unable to cancel within 24 hours. For safety reasons, we ask you to see a copy, we would ask to see a copy of your negative test results. 
prior to rebooking you back in our diary. And again, at this point, it's really important that you remind them that any information that you hold on your computer systems or your booking systems will be held confidentially under data protection. Um, so you have to, again, remind them that it's important that you keep your staff safe and your other visitors to your business and thanking them because, you know, at this point, um, safety is a priority. And in doing this policy, we're protecting them when they come to our businesses, if we are asking this of everybody. So keeping all clients and teams safe is absolutely vital. Getting that message out there to clients is very important. And, you know, thanking clients for your understanding and support. So if you have to cancel within 24 hours, just to go over that again, because you have suspected COVID symptoms, for the safety of you and our teams and visitors to uh, our salon, we will need to see a results of the negative test. And it's held on our data protection. So many uh, tests, um, I, we've all had quite a lot of my team have had tests for various reasons. Um, and um, it's sent via your phones often. And, um, and all they have to do is screenshot to that to you or send it to you in email. And then you can actually pop it on their record card. Of course, you will have clients that don't like these policies. And what you need to do here is you will need to individually look at each client that is repeatedly cancelling with less than 24 hours or not showing up at all. With limited diary space due to sanitation time, you have less time to earn your income. So time is your most precious commodity at the moment and you must value it and you must take it seriously and get that message across to your clients. You cannot afford to you to lose this valuable diary time. So is that client valuable to you? Only you will know, but if this repeatedly happened to me, I would have to say no. And I it would it would be a very sad situation, but I would say to the client that unfortunately if our policies are difficult, again, be kind and professional. If our policies are difficult for them to stick to, we will sadly, it, our salon perhaps isn't the right salon for them. And that's all you have to say. You don't need to be unkind, but you just have to say, I'm sorry, but we must, you know, I must value the clients that are waiting for appointments. So if you present yourself in a professional polite way explaining your policies clients will honestly treat you with the respect you deserve so that's me there with all my ppe on um, and i hope it's been useful for you today um, amanda has said if you have any questions i haven't covered i'm more than happy to cover those for you i know it's difficult and often i remember when i was a mobile it's difficult because the relationship sometimes with a mobile is is much more friendly and professional but you're still running a business whether you're a single mobile you're working in a salon on your own or you're running quite a large team like myself Yourself, you have to respect your professional and um, take yourself seriously because this is a very serious time and clients are going to need us more than ever now. Um, well-being is massive and they need to come to us for well-being and therapies and we need to take care of them and safety is paramount. So I hope that's helped. That was brilliant Maria, thank you so much. Um, would you just be able to unshare your screen and then we can um, do a little bit of a QA? and a um, It's just so that people can see you a little bit more. It'll make it... Um, oh, how do I see that unsharing? Um, so if you just click the share screen button again, it should unshare it. Has it done it? Um, no, I can still see it. Uh, maybe we leave it up if um, there's some issues because it should have come off with that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Maria. It was a really interesting um, webinar and I think it's a really interesting topic because obviously it's something that a lot of salon or spa owners are dealing with at the moment. And it's a 
a tricky thing and it's something it's that people really are going to be dealing with definitely way into next year because obviously it's not showing any sign of disappearing. Um, we had a question on Facebook from Vanessa Brown and she just asked what about people who aren't displaying symptoms but have been told to self-isolate by the NHS track and trace system? What would you do with them if they cancelled within a 24-hour period? Okay, I think what I would do again, because they're involved in COVID in some way or other, what I would do is I would actually put a marker on the diary and ask them to cover the two week period if they've been asked to do that, or um, for any reason, if they've had a test themselves within that two week period, and they do then get a negative test result then to show that so they either need to um, respect the time before they book back in uh, or they need to get tested so that we can see that negative test yeah and obviously I guess at the moment and um, there's been lots of issues with testing as well in general and people struggling to get a test so what if a client um, has symptoms and they do want to have a test and they're struggling to get one and um, within the time frame before their appointment what would you do then I think what I would do then is I would ask them for a two, two to three week period before booking back in, because what you have to realize is that what you're doing is you're safeguarding everybody, because if that client, if you didn't stick to the government recommended period for isolation, which is the two week period, mm -hmm. even if they haven't got it, but there's a possibility that they could have it, if you allowed them back into your business, um, then everyone could become infected if they did display the symptoms. So I think if you can't get a negative test result, but you've been told through track and trace, then the period has to be set and has to be stuck to the two week period. And then if they did in that two week period, um, develop the COVID symptoms from that point forward, it should be two weeks. Mm. Um, and they were some great questions on Facebook. If anybody's watching, you do have any other questions, do comment put them in the comment box and I will ask Maria. Um, I guess one thing I kind of wanted to ask you from watching it is obviously you said that you might lose some clients through this. Obviously it's very difficult and very tricky. I mean, have you experienced a lot of that in your own business or have people generally been very understanding about the situation? I think during the COVID period, everyone has been really, really understanding. You know, I think you, I think one of the hardest things sometimes for a therapist, especially if it's a therapist working on their own, is to actually make that call, pick up the phone and say, this is really difficult for me, but safety is paramount and I just need to go through policies and I have limited mm -hmm. time and I really need you to support me with this. You have to have that conversation. So I think what everyone has found that we our PP is tight, they can see we're taking it seriously mm -hmm. and, um, and they feel safe. It's a really strong message that you are keeping your clients safe and I think that in itself is is so important for clients we've experienced some clients worried about coming back because they feel vulnerable so what we've set up in our business is um, where we can work in isolation completely with a client that's nervous so I have set a day aside where mm. I will work the only person in the salon and that client can come in and it's only me there so that that might help for other people that are vulnerable but Everything that you're doing at this time is, is about respecting diary space. Clients are going to need our therapies and treatments more than ever now. You mm. know, especially with Christmas coming on, there's very limited things that people can do. Coming and having a treatment it is a and having that contact in a safe environment is so important when people have been in isolation or limited contact. You know, mental health is on the increase and the type of treatments we do even a manicure amanda that yeah. social contact is vital at this time so you know i think we are going to be really busy but i think the message to everyone is show your clients you are a safe practice mm, i think you're totally right about people have really missed the power of touch um and there's been so much isolation during this that actually just that little bit of pamper time and being with someone and having that is I don't think that's going to go away anytime soon I do think the industry will recover um, one thing that's kind of coming across is just there's some questions about should salons be looking to change their policies in terms of how much deposit they take for um, bookings as soon as they're made on the phone like is this the time to increase it 
um, just to kind of put that safety net in? Yeah, this is going to be different for so many salons. I mean, I've been in business 27 years and a lot of my clients have been coming for a very long time. Yeah. And, um, so I think if you have that, again, you, you need to think about things. If you have that kind of relationship where you've been treating the same client for a long time, it's kind of almost bordering on saying, I don't trust you. Mm. you suddenly ask for a deposit. So if you have longevity clients, I think what you just have to do is reinforce your policy. But I think if you have new clients coming through the door, then you could potentially take the full amount for the booking. Mm. And then when you've built up a better relationship with them, you, you may be able to let that go a little bit when you know where you are but I think any new client coming into a business um uh, and we've had a lot of new clients wanting to come into our business since we've become mm. a private practice is they have to that it's the relationship that will build and you will know where you are with them mm. I think that's really important isn't it because there's clients that salons will have who come to them time and time again they're regulars they're very loyal and they always come on time and I guess any slight change um would come as a little bit of a shock to them because they're so used to how it is but like you said I think with so many salons getting so many new clients at the moment it could be a good time to start um, yeah. a new policy and get a new process in um, that can work beyond the Covid pandemic as well whenever it might. Yeah, definitely there is no problem in doing that you know um, and, and I think what I see in, in my time in the industry and, and judging and, and working with the FHD often people don't um therapists don't realize that they are how professional we are this is you know I'm so proud of our industry and mm. you know and the therapists that really drive home that professional and, and keep to the code of ethics and I just think we should be as valued as anybody now because we will be taking care of people and we'll you know we're not deemed to be frontline workers because we're not doctors and nurses but we're still working in that front line zone mm. so we're still you know putting ourselves potentially without the correct pp in a vulnerable situation but hopefully everyone's got that right so you know there's a lot of support for nhs and everyone that works frontline but mm. we are just as important because we are taking care of people's well-being and, yeah. and you know it's clinical but it's still very personal Mm. So, you know, salons really need to remember that and be proud of what they're doing because it's really important. Yeah, I do think that people really need us more than ever, like you said, because it's a very difficult time. Really? It's going to be more challenging as we go into flu season, because as you said in your presentation, some of the symptoms of COVID are very similar to the symptoms of flu. And so I think there's going to be a lot of confusion in the winter months if people are unwell as to what they think they have and, um, and any doubt then if there's any doubt as to whether they think it's covid or or not if they if they mention the word covid when they are in that cancellation period it you know then they have to go off and test you can't just say you can't have a conversation about that and say are you sure you, know, mm. you can't say that as a therapist because you're risking too many other people. So if the client mentions the word COVID, then you have to take them down that policy, whereas they have to go off, get tested or have the two week period away from you um, because you cannot take a risk. Yeah, I guess where it gets really hard is I guess it's the language clients use when they contact you, because say somebody calls up and they just say that they have like a, a little bit of a sore throat but they're not showing any other symptoms and they actually feel fine. They think they just have a sore throat. I guess it just complicates the whole issue, doesn't it? It does, it does. And there is an element of trust there as well. But I think, you know, if clients aren't unwell, um, they will give you the 24 hour notice. They will give you the 24 hour notice. But I think if um, you have some clients that are going to use COVID as an excuse because they just don't feel like it on the day. I think what I'm trying to say in my presentation is to avoid that being used as an excuse. So yeah. by saying if the client phones up and says, I'm concerned it could be COVID, then they can't book in next week because it doesn't work like that. So what you're trying to do is if clients genuinely have COVID, you know, my goodness, we will support that and we wouldn't charge them. But if clients are just generally getting up and thinking, oh, I'm tired or I'm, I'm feeling a bit low, whatever, please just respect the 24 hour policy um, and, no, and not use this. So you're trying to avoid clients cancelling last minute and using that as an excuse and then wanting mm. to go in the following week. Mm. I think 
once they use that as an excuse, you have to follow the procedure. And I guess um, just a question that's come through, which is the other flip side, I guess, of this issue is say that you do have a client who cancels within 24 hours. I mean, how challenging is it now to try and fill last minute appointments when they come up? I mean, have you noticed any change in that? Is it difficult or you find it's easier? Well, we uh, we always have a waiting list and coming back now we are back to full practice and we have a waiting list because there is limited time mm. so usually if we have that 24 we we usually can fill that slot so we don't in our business don't usually have a, a problem with that but I know that some businesses are adopting 48 hours be, to allow for that time so I think mm. you have to know your business and understand w- what you're willing to to put as a policy 24 or 48 hours notice but um I think clients are so desperate for appointments and to feel safe that they they will make it happen yeah and like you said as well your salon has a waiting list I'm guessing that when you have a slot that's come free last minute you just ring from the top of your list and see who can come in um but I guess for salons that don't have a waiting list maybe some kind of new salons that have only opened within the last year or whatever what's the best way to kind of get that message out there that they've got a last minute appointment? Is it putting it up on social or is it contacting your data? Maybe putting that on social media or contacting their clients, or perhaps they could adopt a policy, Amanda, where they could say um, it's possible due to the flu season that I think they don't want to say it's possible due to COVID because Mm. that's making them seem vulnerable. But you could say possible due to the flu, uh, the uh, the flu season upon us that I may have last minute uh, cancellations. Would you like to be somebody that I call if that does actually happen? So Mm. for a mobile or somebody in a new or smaller business, actually having that conversation so that they develop their own list. Um, And even then you could, they could say to those particular clients, you know, it it would help me if you were able to feel. So maybe I could offer you some sort of discount. um, If, if you wanted to come onto that list, we could make it some sort of special offer or something. Um, because you just want to fill those slots so yeah definitely. yeah talk to your clients and ask them that question yeah because like you said you know with um the cleaning time and the ppe costs oh, yeah. um, you, know, you can maximize your column don't you every day and so any gap is not great you want to make sure that you're full every day so um but also why adhering to all the protocols and everything else that you need to um I think- Clients want to see that you're safe above everything, Amanda. You know, honestly, mm-hmm. I've had clients come back in and they're, and they're just so emotional about the whole thing. And I ask my clients, I say, do you feel safe? Mm-hmm. I ask them. I think that's really important. I say, have you got any concerns? We've got such tight procedures in place for all of it. We Each of my team have got their own sanitation box. I made a box mm-hmm. for each one of them with their name on. They've got everything they need in that box. They take that box into the room. The client can see that. We, we do everything in front of the client as well. So it, making your client feel safe will make them want to come back. Yeah, and I think once you've got the client in and they've had the treatment and they see that everything's safe, they will come back again and again. I mean, I had a facial for the first time since lockdown um, earlier this week, and I felt quite emotional after it because I was just like, I just, it was just so nice. Um, And I just said to her, I didn't think I'd feel that way after it, but I just couldn't help it. I just felt quite emotional. And it is. It is so emotional, Amanda. Lots of clients feel like that. And and it, it is, it's that tactile yeah even in that you know that more sanitized environment it is that you're actually touching your client and and um you know and they just they want something positive our news is full of negativity constantly and for clients that live alone I often think about this I think if they haven't got somebody to talk to like you and I are talking now about it Mm. their only feed is the media from tv it must be terrifying for them yeah so to come in and have their manicure, you know, I've got clients in their 70s and, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm like, oh, mm. God, come in, let me take care of you. It's just about them knowing that it's safe and seeing that it's safe. Because, yeah, I think you're right. Like if you are a high risk um, person and you've been isolating at home, um, I think maybe in your mind um, you're not 
you may be picturing the salon different to how it actually is and that is you know we know that salons are extremely hygienic anyway even before all of this so I think it's more the one good thing that's come out of this is maybe that that has made consumers really aware of just how um, hygiene and safety levels are just incredibly high in the industry anyway um, but Maria they were all the questions that we've got I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who's watching and I know there's a couple of people who um, came in sort of halfway through this webinar will be available on PB's uh, Facebook page indefinitely so you can go back and watch it from the start and we will also be loading it up to our YouTube channel tomorrow so if you did want to watch it again or you missed a little bit at the start you've got that option um, but Maria it was absolutely brilliant thank you so much helpful oh, advice you. and I hope to see you at some point in the future uh, <laughs> yeah. but thank you so much and it's much appreciated Okay, good luck everyone. You'll be fine. Stay positive. Thanks. See you later. Bye. Bye.